In this video, we're going to demonstrate the proper donning and doffing of personal protective equipment for special droplet contact precautions. For all patients who are positive or under investigation for COVID-19, caregivers will need to implement special droplet contact precautions. These precautions include surgical masks, eye protection, gowns, and gloves for all caregivers entering the patient's room. They also include closed doors and dedicated equipment. If the patient is undergoing an aerosol generating procedure, caregivers must use a PAPR or N95 respirator mask in lieu of the surgical mask. These must be implemented for the duration of the procedure. Common aerosol generating procedures include specimen collection, open airway suction, nebulizer treatments, ET intubation, CPR, BiPAP, and CPAP. For a full list, please review the Peace Health COVID-19 website. Now, let's watch a demonstration of donning and doffing with special contact droplet precautions. Start with hand hygiene. Then don your gown. Next, don your face mask. You may opt for a face mask with integrated eye protection if one is available. If your mask does not have eye protection, protect your eyes with safety glasses or shield. Finally, don your gloves, making sure that there is no skin visible between the cuff of the glove and your gown. Next, we will review doffing PPE. The first step happens in the patient room. Before exiting, remove your gown and your gloves. Perform hand hygiene before removing your eye protection and mask. Remove your mask from the back. Avoid touching your face. If you are using reusable eye protection, leave it in place for now. Perform hand hygiene and immediately exit the patient's room. Immediately after exiting the patient's room, clean any reusable items by donning clean gloves and wiping them down with a disinfectant wipe. Make sure to clean off any surfaces that you set dirty items on and perform hand hygiene when you're finished. Now we'll go through a demonstration of donning and doffing PPE when we need to use a PAPR for aerosol generating procedures. Just like before, we'll start off with hand hygiene. Next, we need to check the PAPR and the PAPR hood to make sure they're safe to use. Inspect the PAPR hood you plan to use for any rips, tears, or cracks in the face shield. Verify that the unit has a charged battery and is producing enough airflow to keep you safe. When using a 3M tester, make sure that the orange ball rises above the letter I when held in a vertical position. Reconnect your hoses, ensuring they snap into place. The unit should be on when you buckle it to your waist. Adjust the hood so it is comfortable and ensure there is air flowing out of the exhaust vents under your chin. Now you'll need to don the gown over the top of the papper. You may need to expand the neck opening to ensure it fits over your head. Finally, don your gloves. You are now ready to enter the patient's room. Just like before, we will begin docking our PPE in the patient's room. 
Start with removing your gown and gloves, being careful not to touch the contaminated portions. Perform hand hygiene and immediately exit the room. Before removing the packer, you will need to don clean gloves. It is helpful to have an assistant. Unbuckle the papper unit at the waist, holding it away from your body. If you have an assistant, have them hold the papper unit with gloved hands while you unbuckle. Grasp the hood at the edges of the shield. Pull it up and away from your face. Be careful to only grasp the edges of the shield and not contaminate the inside of the hood. Thoroughly clean the outside of the hood with disinfectant wipes. If you feel the inside of the hood became contaminated while doffing it, clean the inside of the hood as well. Place it on a clean surface. With a separate wipe, clean the outside of the papper unit, focusing on the high touch areas, including the hose and the buckles. Follow up with wiping down the surface that you're cleaning the unit on. Remove your gloves and immediately perform hand hygiene. Put the papper unit away and make sure it's plugged in and charging so it's ready for the next use. You will store your clean papper hood in a patient belonging bag with your name on it for the rest of the shift. At the end of the shift, clean the hood inside and out and place in the recycling bin for further reprocessing. A few final key points to remember. One, use the right PPE for the patient's circumstances. We need to be mindful of our limited resources. Two, make sure you're cleaning reusable equipment immediately after each use to prevent contamination of our clean areas with dirty items. You may need to be adaptable to changes in our usual supplies. We've demonstrated with what we have today, but we may need to adapt as our supplies do. Finally, with all the extra steps, it's easy to forget the most important thing that can stop the spread of infection. Hand hygiene, hand hygiene, hand hygiene. Following the special droplet contact precautions and washing your hands frequently is one of the things you can do to keep yourself safe and stop the spread of COVID-19.